Welcome, ladies and gentlemen. This is Before the Bell, episode number seven. As always, I am your host, Matt Donato. And like I say every podcast, throw those headphones in, sit back, relax. Allow me to entertain you for 45 minutes, give or take. It's always give or take with me. You never know what's going to happen. I may end early. I may go way into overtime. But that's how we do it here at Rope Break. So sit back, relax, and let me talk some WWE. Um, there's been some uh, pretty crazy stuff going on lately. So I'm just going to jump right into certain things. Um, first and foremost, I don't know if you guys have heard, but the WWE is getting rid of their Elimination Chamber pay-per-view. Um, I'm sure you've heard that. If you haven't, you're probably living under a rock. Um, but if you are one of those who do live under a rock for some reason, and you don't know that they're getting rid of this pay-per-view, they are. They're getting rid of Elimination pay Chamber pay-per-view, which I don't necessarily mind. You know, I'm not saying that as it's a bad thing. I don't like gimmick gimmick uh, pay-per-views named after gimmick matches. Uh, obviously, an Elimination Chamber, Hell in a Cell, Money in the Bank. I think those matches need to be incorporated into pay-per-views. I don't like them getting their own full pay-per-view. Um, I think it's hokey. I think it's stupid. And quite frankly, it's a waste of time when you tune into a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view and you only get one Cell match. Luckily, this year we got two, but, you know, case in point, almost every other year we've only gotten one. Elimination Chamber, we usually only get one. Last year, again, we got two. But, you know, you would think that it being called Hell in a Cell or Elimination Chamber, you would get every match being in a Cell or being an Elimination Chamber match. Um, it, it just, it's pointless and stupid. So yes, I'm happy that they're getting rid of the Elimination Chamber pay-per-view, but what they're replacing it with is so much worse. Now this is something, I don't know if you've heard this yet, but you're going to hear it right now. The pay-per-view that they are replacing it with is going to be called, wait for it, WWE fast lane yep fast lane as in the fast lane you're going fast i don't i don't know what the hell they're doing with this it makes zero sense to me it sounds stupid it is complete garbage and makes zero sense to me where in their minds they think that this is a good idea that this sounded great for a pay-per-view it, it just makes no sense to me and i think Um, Aussie pointed it out on Sharpshoot, you know, Elimination Chamber falls in between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania is a pivotal pay-per-view in that, in that time frame to get us from point A to point B. Elimination Chamber, while I didn't care for it being, you know, a gimmick pay-per-view, you know, still got us hyped up for WrestleMania. When you see those chambers light up. You know, and you and and you're wondering who's gonna make it to WrestleMania. You know, it really builds these characters. You know, if Brock Lesnar were to go as the WWE World Heavyweight Champion into the chamber and completely destroy everybody, and then go on to WrestleMania, whoever beats him is gonna be that. It's gonna be that much sweeter. You know, so why they're taking these this out? And and I guess it has something to do with Lesnar. They don't want him you know, involved in the Elimination Chamber right yet. They're, I guess they're tr- they're saving that, I guess, from what I hear. Um, I'm not too sure on that whole story. Um, but whatever the reason is, it's stupid. And they should have waited till they had something, um, you know, something that, that wasn't so... That's the word I'm looking for. Stupid, I guess. I guess that's, that's the word I'm going with. It's just stupid. Fastlane is a terrible name. You know, it, what is this, NASCAR? Seriously. I, I actually have heard rumors that they're on a uh, NASCAR kick. Um, there's actually a guy backstage who's, you know, named after. They, they picked his name, his first and last name, or, or the first and last name of two separate NASCAR drivers. Um, why they're on a NASCAR pick or kick, I, I couldn't begin to tell you 
and I I don't know why. It's, it's just stupid. But that that really does explain Fastlane. It's a dumb name. You know, it sounds like a terrible pay-per-view. You know, you know, it sounds like it's going to be another um what was that what was that pay-per-view when we saw Rey Mysterio versus uh CM Punk. I can't remember the name of it, but it had some political affiliation. I remember it was in Washington, D.C. Man, I can't remember the name of that pay-per-view. That just goes to show you how worthless it was. And that's going to be the same thing here. This pay-per-view is going to be worthless. There's nothing exciting about Fastlane. What happened to Vengeance? What happened to Backlash? What happened to Armageddon? What about New Year's Resolution? I think I got that mixed up. I think it's New Year's Revolution. But either way, it doesn't matter. Those aren't here anymore. And we're all sad because of it. You know, it's just the creativity is just gone. You know, the creative team sucks the life out of this out of this product. It's just so hard to watch. It's just it's just ridiculous to me that you know, it what it seems like to me is they go for quantity over quality that that seems to be you know the pattern here in the wwe as much as we pump out as much as we possibly can even if the quality is absolute garbage and you know what look at the wwe studios look how terrible that is can you name one movie that they've ever made that you actually enjoyed i really can't think of one the chaperone oh that was a great movie no that sucked Knucklehead? Yeah, no, that's never making it on my shelf. I mean, Christmas Bounty, uh, The Marine 35, how many of those stupid movies they made. I really didn't hate the one with John Cena, but I didn't think it was that great. Um, 12 Rounds, I mean, it, it was that was another not that great movie. I mean, there haven't really been great movies. You know, they keep you know, pumping out as much as they possibly can, and, you know, I just saw, I don't know if you guys seen this yet, go check it out, just, just so you can feel my pain, that, that's the only reason I want you to check it out, so you can feel what I'm going through, Jingle All the Way too. yeah, you heard me right, Jingle All the Way too. I remember reading about this a while ago, and I, and I tried to, I tried to get rid of it out of my memory, I really, really tried to block it from my memory and uh scrolling through the internet as i do sometimes after work i uh came across the link to the trailer which really wasn't a trailer it was just a really crappy put together typical wwe studios nonsense um for Jingle All the Way 2, which is a sequel to, yes, the original Jingle All the Way with Arnold Schwarzenegger and Sinbad, which I know some people hate that movie. I actually really like that movie. It's one of my favorites, not one of my favorites, but, you know, one of my favorites around Christmas time. I enjoy watching it. Um, but now, of course, WWE doesn't give a shit about the quality. They're not in it for the quality. They want to just, you know, they, they want to make as much money as possible. They're greedy. And they're willing to put out as much as they can for as as much as they can. And, you know, really shit on the quality. They don't care. This movie proves it. It's got freaking Larry the Cable Guy. Are you kidding me? You gotta be kidding me. And, here you go. You know, not just Larry the Cable Guy. It's got some other stars in there too, like Santino Morella. Yeah, Santino Morella is in the movie. Nope, not a cameo. He's actually in the movie. And uh, he's got a role. And I'm pretty positive that he's going to be acting as Santino Morella. So he'll be doing his lines in his crappy Italian accent. It, it's just... It, it just... It, it really boggles my mind how they can do this. It, it really don't even know what to say. It, it's just ridiculous. 
But yeah, seriously, go check it that go check that out because it's just. I guess I'll use the word ridiculous again because it's the best way I can describe it right now. Um, man, you get you gotta just gotta get me off this topic. I'm getting I'm getting too agitated over here. Damn WWE and their garbage movies. Man, what a bunch of crap. Freaking fast lane. It's really going down this shitter. I'm telling you. I mean, I hate to be so negative. I mean, I just love wrestling so much. I just hate to see it dying like this, but really. A few good Raws here and there, WWE is not in the upswing. I'm, I'm worried about it because they just seem way too greedy right now, and they can't afford to be. You know, all of these massive budget cuts. I mean, somebody like Justin Roberts, which, to be honest with you, and I think I said this a couple weeks ago, you know, I'm not really that upset over Justin Roberts leaving. Not that I dislike the guy he was I really didn't care for his announcing that's just my opinion nothing against him personally just didn't care for his announcing but he was pivotal there's no there's no denying that this guy's been announcing for the WWE on Monday Night Raw for years this guy's been doing it forever and just like that they can just cut him you know just goes to show that you know look at Teddy Long Teddy Long you know, was in the WWE forever. And just like that, they cut him. Anybody can go. Doesn't matter who you are or how long you've been there. Everybody's got a target on them. And the budget cuts will come and get you one way or another. If, if, you're, not, if you're not making them money, they're going to cut you. Which tells me that they are really hurting. And, you know, it's, it's a shame. I hope that they pick back up. They have a lot of talent, so it would be a shame... You know, to lose all of that, but they're getting too greedy. They need to kind of slow their roll. They need to cut their losses. I think they need to trim down. That That's what I would do. If I myself were to go into the WWE, I would start trimming down. You do not need WWE Studios. That is not your bread and butter. You're not a movie, you know, production company. That's not what you do. It's, it's, it's like a hobby that Vince wanted to try out one of these days. You know, God damn it. You know, I would love to try out these moving pictures. I know, I know. You guys are jealous as hell of my awesome Vince McMahon impression. There's more to come. Don't you worry. Don't you worry. I know you can replay that over and over if you want. And it was an amazing impression. You don't got to keep telling me. I know. But I just feel like, you know, they they really just need to cut their losses. I would cut WWE Studios because you don't need it. You know, don't cut the things that are making your wrestlers happy. Like, don't cut catering. Seriously, how much money are you spending on catering versus how much money are you spending spitting out these garbage movies that nobody watches? Really. Cut your losses. Cut WWE Studios because you don't need them. Bring back, make your wrestlers happy. Make them want to work for you. You're not doing that. And and also stop paying millions of dollars to these part timers. For and listen, I got nothing against part timers coming back. I don't. What I have a problem with is the fact that the WWE seems to heavily rely on these guys to sell tickets. It's like, when you have to call The Rock back just to get people to watch your show, or to buy tickets to a WrestleMania, because without him it would suck, you got a real problem. How about you build up your show and you don't need them, then when they do come back as part-timers, people aren't going to be as pissed because they don't need to be there, but it's cool to see The Rock come back. I wouldn't mind seeing Rock Triple H at WrestleMania. But that can't be the whole show. That cannot be the best part of the show. It just can't. Because if that if the Rock versus Triple H at WrestleMania 31 is the best part of your entire show, then you have done something incredibly wrong. Your young guys need to really steal the show. And you need to help them get there. And you're not and and they're just not doing that. It just makes no sense to me. It's so simple. It's right there, but they're greedy. I told you guys to get me off of this topic. 
told you I was going to keep ranting. You didn't get me off this topic. I'm putting this on you. It's your fault. It's all your fault. Um, well, we're, you know, we're, we're already, you know, talking negatively. So how about we kind of move on to another topic? Uh, Kurt Angle, who was supposedly in talks with the WWE about coming back. You know, they were in negotiations. Him and Triple H, I guess, were talking. And it now seems like Kurt Angle is not going to be returning to the WWE and that he will re-sign with TNA. Um, because, like, like what happened the last time he left, he left the WWE because the schedule was way too rough and they are not willing to negotiate. That's the difficulty with the WWE. I've heard this from a lot of different, you know, wrestlers who have left. They all say the same thing. WWE is really hard to negotiate with, and they really are really strict on how much you work. They want you to work a full schedule. And, you know, and that's fine for them, and that works for them. And if you're willing to do that, you know, to, to you know, really work a full schedule because that's your dream, then do it. But for a guy like Kurt Angle, who had already been working with them for a long amount of time, you know, had so many different injuries, I mean... You know, he already had a broken freaking neck. Um, which, you know, that does to this day. It, it's an injury that never goes away. And they weren't really willing to work with him. Um, I'm giving you, by the way, I'm giving you a rundown of the story of what, of Kurt Angle leaving. Just in case you haven't heard it. Um, he kind of left, you know, he kind of got out of his contract before it expired. And apparently him and Vince had it out. Vince flipped out on him because they really needed him but he wasn't really getting respected so he kind of left and that's when he went to TNA because they had offered him a deal you know that was much better you know he was able to work less days it was a less strict schedule so yeah obviously I'm getting you know paid pretty much the same to work less time I can spend more time with my family and I can rest up my injuries, and I'm still getting paid a decent amount of money. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm gonna go over there. It's just kind. Of, it's just logical. That just makes sense. Um. So part two happening again. WWE shooting themselves in the foot. Really had an opportunity to help put, in my opinion, to help put Rusev over. I know Aussie agrees with me, and I know Alec probably agrees with me too. Um. You know. Rusev versus Kurt Angle with Kurt Angle putting him over. I don't know if they agree with him putting Rusev over. Um, I do. That's my opinion. I don't see a point of him coming back just to win more titles. I don't really think he needs it. Um, but TNA offered him a better schedule, apparently. He can spend more time with his family. He's, he's working a limited schedule where the WWE want him to work full time. And of course, they weren't able, they weren't willing to negotiate down, and shot themselves in the foot, because you know they're greedy. That's what they do. Um, I promise this is not a podcast where I just bash WWE the entire time, because they do some things right sometimes. Just lately, they they just seem to be really really screwing things up. You know, and I I really want them to be successful, but it's just frustrating. Um. To see them going through this. So Kurt Angle is not going to be there. What do you guys think? You know, are you are you happy that he's not going to be coming back? You know, would you like to see him back? And if you if he and if he does end up coming back, because it's still not, you know, this it's it's still up in the air. It's it's still not a proven fact that he's going to go to TNA. It's just this is what's being said in the rumor mills. And you know, like I always say, take all of that whatever you read with a grain of salt because. The information gets thrown around through different people multiple times. It's like the telephone game. You ever play the telephone game when somebody says one thing in somebody's ear, and by the time it gets down the line, I say I really like chicken tenders. And by the time it gets to the to the end of the line, it's it's like I just slayed a dragon. People are like, "What the hell?" That's pretty much what the rumor mill is. One person says something. By the time it gets to the end, it's completely construed. 
Some it's hit and miss. Sometimes it's accurate. Sometimes it's not. So take it with a grain of salt. Take it as this is possible, but definitely it's not a definite yet. You know that's you can't get mad at the messenger. Do you get mad at the mailman for bringing you bills? No. Why would you? That's stupid. So why are you getting mad at dirt sheets for bringing you information? We're not telling you it's true. When you come to rope break, we're not saying this is accurate, 100% fact. We're telling you that this is what we found. It's interesting. Take it for what it is. Don't look at it and say, oh, Kurt Angle is returning. Oh, now he's not. You guys lied to us. No, we didn't lie to you. We just told you what we knew. This is the information we have. Do with it what you want. Don't shoot the messenger. So, you know, he could still return. I, I don't know for sure. But it, it seems like he's willing to go back to TNA. It sounds like he is. Um, and, you know, I wish him the best. I would love to see him do a final run in the WWE. But, you know, it's just not going to work out. Um, you know, I, one thing I did want to talk about is, uh, Kevin Steen in the dub, in the WWE and NXT, um, getting it, this, see, I, I, I promise you, this isn't just me bashing WWE, it's not going to be all negative, here's a positive, something I think WWE did right, Kevin Steen's new name, if you haven't already seen it, it's been all over RopeBreakWrestling.com on our Facebook page. So if you're not liking that and you're not, you know, bookmarking our website, then you're out of loop. You would have known this already. You wouldn't have to wait till before the bell. You would not. But you waited, so here we are. And they changed it to Kevin Owens, um, which uh, Owen. It, it derives from two things. One, his son's name. And two, um, the origin of his son's name, which is his favorite wrestler, Owen Hart. He named his son after Owen, and now he's named him his now his name is Kevin Owens after his son and Owen Hart, which it's a win for me. You know, you got me, you already got me right there. Owen Hart's one of my all-time favorite wrestlers. I think the guy was, you know, beyond amazing. I mean, the guy could wrestle f f just, I mean, amazingly. And I think the word I was looking for there when I kind of stuttered was uh, fantastically, but my brain didn't want to get there, so it sounded like fin... And then I went into amazing. <laughs> but the word I was looking for was fantastically. Just thought I would point that out. See, I point my errors out. This isn't a perfect show. I say stupid shit. It doesn't matter. It's my show. I can do what I want. Um, but anyway, going back to what I was talking about. You know, Owen Hart's amazing. Kevin Seen's amazing. I'm glad that they didn't change it to something absolutely stupid. Um, I think I saw online once Stephen Keen, and I almost cried. I thought that was, I really thought somebody was breaking the news that that was going to be his name. I got so upset. I was like, I, I, that's not, you can't market that. That's just terrible. It's like trying to mar it's, tr it's like trying to market beef to a vegetarian. <laughs> Just doesn't work. Um. Yeah, but I'm I'm happy with Kevin Owens. Um, I I think it could be a really really, um. You know, really positive thing. Um, I think it was a good move on the WWE to keep his name Kevin, and just change the last name. Um, I think that bodes well. That way, fans can kind of know who he is, and they could they could keep the um, fight Owens fight. You know that has a nice ring to it. A lot of people have said that, and I agree. Has a nice ring to it. Sounds good. Flows flows really nicely, and I think that would look really good on shirts. I would buy that shirt. And I'm pretty sure a lot of fans would. I love Kevin Cena. You know, I've been watching him since he was on Ring of Honor. I've been watching him in um, Pro Wrestling Guerrilla. Um, you know, I've watched him do a lot of different things on the indie circuit, and I really enjoy his work. 
you know, he's really, really passionate about the business. And his, what I like about his promos, and this is what really get, garners attention, and I think the reason it gains attention, whether it's positive or negative, is because it's real. He's not the most clean-cut, you know, mic worker that, that business has ever seen. He's got that realness to him, almost similar to a Brock Lesnar. That when, So when he picked up a microphone, you believe what he's saying. When he says he's going to beat your ass, you believe it. That's the mark of, of somebody who's great on the mic. And I enjoy his work. His in-ring is great. I think he's not afraid to take a bump. I think we're starting to see more and more guys right now. You know, the group that they have right now in the WWE, and this is also including Kevin Steen, um, you can include Kenta and Prince Devitt or uh, Hideo Itami, which I like that name too, and uh, Finn, Finn Balor, which um, took a little warming, took, took me a little time to warm up to that, but starting to really like that too. All these guys are willing to take a bump, and it's kind of almost reminding me, like, with all the top guys right now, with Ambrose, Rollins, Steen, Kenta, Prince Devitt, it's kind of almost like a new ECW within Monday Night Raw. I know that sounds weird, but these guys remind me of a lot of guys within ECW because they're not, especially Dean Ambrose, I think that's a given. Um, but, I mean, they're not afraid to take chair shots. They're not afraid to do dangerous things. Um so I'm really, really excited to see where it goes. That, I mean, the talent right now is the only thing making me excited for the WWE's future. Um, but let's be honest here: the talent can only just go, can only go just so far. I mean, the WWE really has to step up and take them there, and and they really need to get their shit together in order to do that. I mean, I've seen so many great, talented people wasted because the WWE had their heads up their asses. And I really hope that that's this is not the case for that. But we never know with WWE. Um, man, this is a really negative podcast. Um, but, okay, I'll keep it positive. I like Kevin Owens. Sounds really good. WWE, you get a thumbs up from before the bell from Matt Donato over here. And, uh. That's worth absolutely nothing, but that's okay. You get a smile and a thumbs up. Good job, WWE. You get a pat on the back. Um, how about this? What about, I don't know if you guys caught this either. I know I posted it on our Facebook page, Rope Break Wrestling, uh, facebook.com slash Rope Break Wrestling. And um, it was a tweet from Zack Ryder that said, Bad news is I'm not in WWE 2K15. Good news is my internet championship is hashtag LOL. So Zack Ryder is not in the game. But his internet title is. And the reason I wanted to talk about this is because that makes no sense to me. Okay, I understand Zack Ryder not being in the game because he hasn't been prevalent on TV lately. There's he, lately, I mean ever. I mean, it's been a long, long, long time says he's done anything on WWE television. So therefore, yeah, it makes sense. They're not going to waste time and put him in the game. So why in the hell are you putting his championship on in the game? To me, that makes no sense. One, it's not a real championship. Two, it's never been used on WWE television. Three, I know nobody's buying the game thinking, oh man, I hope I can become the WWE internet internet champion. At least if if let me be clear. If that's the reason you're buying this game, throw the game in the fire, burn all of your wrestling stuff, go back to school and move on with your life away from pro wrestling because you do not deserve to be a fan. You have I I am I am revoking your right to being a WWE fan. It, but it makes no sense to me. Why are you going to have his title. And there's Zack Ryder's title. The only one. You know the only one legitimately. Who's ever. Because it's not a legitimate title. I, I just It's a YouTube title. That he made up. Because he wasn't getting a push. So you're going to put that on your. On your game. And leave him out. 
you know, you know, the only thing I seriously can think of is that is an absolute slap in his face. Who did he piss off? Because that really is. There's no point to have that in the game. I mean, nobody's going to use it. It's not a real title. It's never been on any of the shows. Or, like I said, no point, literally no point to have it on there. I can't even explain that any better than that. No point. And then you leave the guy who created the only guy who's really ever held it, the only guy that would make some sense of having it on, you leave him out of the game. That seems purposeful. That seems like they did that on purpose just to spite him. I'm not the biggest Zack Ryder fan, and I really don't care if he's in the game or not, but that, that's kind of, that's kind of, uh, that kind of sucks. That's like a slap in the face. Like, we're putting your title in there, your shitty title, and we're leaving you out. We care, we care more about this garbage title than we do about you. That's kind of what that's saying to me, and I think that's ridiculous. But, um, yeah, I, th I thought that was just, that sucks. Poor Ryder. Poor Zack Ryder. Can't, poor guy can't catch a break. Um, can, speaking of breaks, how about the return of Ryback? I know I was actually pretty pumped. I didn't expect it. Um, I actually thought that it was going to be Bray Wyatt making his in-ring debut, or return, I mean, to fight Bo Dallas because they're brothers. I thought that would be cool. Um, I was kind of expecting that, but ended up not happening. Ended up being Ryback returning. Um, and interesting. You know, he's got a, a new singlet on. says the big guy. Or big guy. I think it just says big guy. Which was his gimmick before. When he was wearing the leather jackets and doing commentary. The gimmick that I looked at and said, this is a gimmick that could really do well for him. And then they teamed him up with... Paul Heyman, and then they teamed him up with Curtis Axel, and went absolutely nowhere again. See, this is a classic case of pushing way too fast. Vince McMahon saw a big, muscular dude and said, this guy's going to be WWE champion. I don't care if he can wrestle, I don't care if he can talk, he's just big. Put a belt on him. And maybe not even Vince, maybe there was other guys. I hate to keep blaming Vince, but, yeah, well, he owns the business. It's his decision, so it kind of is to blame for everything good or bad that happens. Because it's his decision. And they pushed him way too quickly. And he failed. Same thing that happened with Sheamus. Same thing that happened with Del Rio. They all failed because they were pushed way too quickly. I think Ryback has a lot of potential. You know, he's got that charisma, he's got the passion. I see a guy who really, really, truly loves and respects this business, and I can't help but like the guy. I mean, when you're that passionate about, you know, something that I'm passionate about, I can't help but have that mutual respect for you, or have that respect for you. Can't say mutual because he doesn't know who I am, so that didn't make any sense. Um, but at least you know I can't help but have respect for him, and you know. But it just, I guess we're keeping on the topic of WWE constantly screwing things up. You know, this is something that's been screwed up multiple, multiple, multiple times. And to be quite honest, this is their last, in my opinion, this is their last chance with this. I, I don't think they're going to get another chance after this. If they fail with them again, then Ryback is done. And I, you know, I think it's possible to really get over this. I think... The big guy gimmick is is perfect for him. That bully, that tough guy. I think having him come in, and there's speculation that he's going to be beating uh, Rusev for the title for the U.S. Championship. You know, I think that could be interesting. Um, I don't think he's ready yet. I think it's far too soon. Um, I think they kind of need to work on rebuilding him back up. Because, you know, they have a tendency to do this. They rush things. So I feel like we're going to get the match really, really, really soon. And Ryback won't be ready. Because they, they haven't built him up. You bring him back repackaged. Because this is a repackage. Whether they want to accept that or not, it's a repackage. So they repackage the guy. They bring him back. And then they put him in a title match with 
Rusev. I'm assuming Rusev will be U.S. champion soon. Ryback will beat him for the championship. That's my prediction. You know, in typical WWE, this is this is typical WWE. This is what they would do. They bring him back. They think, oh, everybody loves Ryback now. We're just going to throw him right at the championship. No, you need to build. This is this is technically a new character. Since you really did nothing with any of his characters but prior, you need to treat this like a new character. And when you have a new character, you need to build build on it. You need to build it up, make it look strong, make people invested in your characters. Because if, if you're showing me that you're not really caring about their character, then why should I? And if you're not giving me anything to relate to, then, I'm, then once again, I'm not going to care. So you need to build on that. You know, and they're, and they're, you know, this is something they do constantly. This is not new for them. They constantly throw guys in the mix and then don't build on their characters. Roman Reigns, perfect example. Throw that guy in the mix because he's big, he's strong, he's got so much potential. But then they don't build on his character. He's still Roman Reigns from the Shield. There's nothing else to him. After leaving the Shield, there's been no character development. I know nothing about him. Nothing I can relate to. If they do that with Ryback, then he will fail. So they need to really get on board. They need to really... If they're serious about pushing him, which I think they should be. You know, he's not terrible. I think he gets a bad rap. You know, he's not my favorite wrestler on the roster. I'm not going to say he is. And I don't think he's going to be WWE World Heavyweight Champion. But I think he could really be, you know, useful. You know, in feuds, I think he could put on some good matches. But we'll have to see where they go with him. I think, you know, we could really see some good stuff from him. But, we'll, you know, we'll have to see where that goes. Um, maybe with a guy like Randy Orton. Speaking of Randy Orton... Um, you know, that's actually the hot topic right now. Randy Orton is on fire. You know, he's being talked about everywhere. He's t being talked about, um, you know, all those RKO out of nowhere videos on YouTube. Um, you know, he's really starting to come into his own, you know, that promo on Raw. And I said this on React, and if you haven't watched React yet, then I implore you, go check it out. It's on YouTube. We do it every single Monday night. Alec hosts it every Monday night on YouTube. And it, it's just an awesome show. I'm on it on occasion. Um, you know, Alec does a great job with this show. Very entertaining. I enjoy being on it when I'm on it. And um, really awesome stuff. Whenever we're on it, you know, we, we talk about Raw, we react to what we're seeing on Raw. It's uncensored, uncut, live, in the moment, immediately following Monday Night Raw. So as soon as Raw is done, you know, you know, you can turn your TV off. You don't got to sit on the USA Network and watch Chris Lee Knows Best unless, unless you want to. Then I'm not here to judge, but um, seriously, why? Um... Switch over. Come watch React. It's a great show. And what I love about the show and how Alec runs his show is it's always honest. Alec runs a tight ship. He runs an honest ship. You watch React, you know you're going to get honest opinions from everybody on the panel. And it's going to be awesome. And I was on last week, enjoyed the hell out of it. And, it, you know, it, it really was, you know a great show. We all got our chance to speak. We all got a chance to kind of enjoy ourselves. It's really just a bunch of friends sitting around, you know, bullshitting about Monday Night Raw. You know, and you guys are more than welcome to join in, in on the conversations um, and, you know, message us on YouTube. You know, even though this show isn't live, you're more than welcome to post your comments, to talk, to interact, to ask questions. You know, if you have questions for me that you want answered, let me know. I'll answer it. I'll try to remember um, this coming up week to post on Facebook ahead of time to get questions in from you guys so that I can answer them live right here on the show. Um, and, you know, I'll, I'll obviously give you a shout out. And... Uh, you know, you know I, I love interacting with you guys. It's enjoyable for me. I have a lot of fun doing it. 
you guys asked some great compelling questions and you know it, it's just fun to know that you guys are enjoying my show so I, feedback is also awesome I'd like to know what you guys think of the show what I could do to improve um, but once again I'm going on a tangent and I've completely got off topic I was talking about Randy Orton, and I was talking about what I said last week on React about how Randy Orton is on a roll. That segment on Monday Night Raw, for me personally, stole the show. That RKO to Rollins was beautiful. You know, his aggression, his, you know, just that mentality, that Viper mentality that, you know, that Randy Orton that that we're used to seeing, um... I think it was 2009 when he had that awesome rivalry with Triple H where, you know, he went to, or Triple H went to his house, you know, he punt, you know, he punted Triple H in the head, he punted Vince McMahon, he punted uh, Shane McMahon, RKO'd Stephanie after kissing her in front of Triple H, just amazing stuff. This is the Randy Orton we need now. Seems like we're getting it. I know people are super excited. You know, Rollins sold that RKO. We know we're going to get a rivalry between those two. And the age of Orton seems to be back. But I honestly don't think so. I know a lot of people are really on that kick. A lot of people think Randy Orton's in for a huge, huge run. And I just don't see it. I'm not saying that it's not, you know, he doesn't have that ability or that that's not. You know, we will see an amazing Randy Orton, and he will have a great run, but what I'm saying is he's not going to have a championship run, and I do feel like it's going to be short-lived. I said this on React, and I really, really believe this. I think the only reason they're building up Randy Orton right now is so that he can put over Seth Rollins. They need to put over Seth Rollins before... uh, I'm assuming WrestleMania is when he's going to cash in. Um, We could see something... A little bit after that, he has until money in the bank. Um, so he does have a little bit of time after WrestleMania. But I think they want to put him over before then. Um, so you got to think WrestleMania is what? Was it March or April this year? Um I'm thinking maybe five, six months. Yeah, somewhere around there. That's that's about right, yeah. Um so five, six months in WWE terms is not a lot of time. So they have to get Seth Rollins over. They need to build the storyline with, with Randy Orton. I don't see him becoming WWE World Heavyweight Champion. At least not now. Maybe after his rivalry with Rollins. But then still I don't see it happening. You know they're working on building the future. And I think that's the whole purpose. Of Randy Orton. You know becoming that Viper. They need somebody believable. They need somebody strong. So that when Seth Rollins beats him. It's more believable. And it's it's much better for Seth Rollins overall. That's, That's the key here. Seth Rollins is the entire key to this. He's the reason this is happening. And he's the reason this is going to be short-lived. This is not about Randy Orton. This is not about the return of the age of Orton. And Orton will not become WWE World Heavyweight Champion anytime soon. And if he does, it's only because he's passing it to Seth Rollins. Randy Orton right now is is doing what Chris Jericho does. He's putting over guys. This is not a new run for Orton. This is not breathing new life into Orton. And I don't see anything big. I mean, he's going to have a great run. It's going to be interesting to see what he do, what he does. His promos are going to be great. His matches are going to be great. But as far as him in and of himself, you know, elevating himself and really having a brand new title run, this, like I said, this isn't about Orton. This is about Seth Rollins. And we're going to see him put Seth Rollins over. And it's, it's going to be cool to watch, but don't get your hopes up and thinking that Randy Orton's going to be a WWE champion again because I just don't see that happening. I mean, maybe they'll drop him in mid card. I think that could be good too, but I I don't see him being a a serious title holder. I can't say I won't see him holding a title. I just can't see him being a serious main event title holder because it's literally, he's just there 
to pass the torch to Seth Rollins. They're really trying to build Seth Rollins, and they need to build him up before Mania, so don't expect a huge, huge run from Orton. Um, and if WWE does what they normally do, Orton will come out next week, and he will kiss Triple H's ass. Probably not, but that's how WWE works. Um, but like I said, I, I personally wouldn't expect a huge... Uh, title reign from Orton. This isn't the age of Orton returned. Um, Orton is being built up to be knocked down. That's, you know, that's really all there is to it. Um, and as I continue to be negative on this episode of Before the Bell, I'm looking at the time, and we are, you know, running into overtime. So it's about that time again. Your favorite time of Before the Bell. The segment where I say goodbye. I know it's your favorite segment. You're like, thank God this guy's done running his mouth. Sick and tired of hearing him talk. I just wanted to hear some rumors. But it's not completely over. Because there's still a couple things that I got to do. It wouldn't be before the bell if I didn't do these things. And that's shameless plugs. I already told you to watch React. Seriously, go watch it. It's an awesome, awesome show. Alec Kozubski does an amazing job hosting it. He's, he's a good friend of mine. You know, co-creator of this awesome lifestyle called Rope Break Wrestling. So go check that out every single night immediately following Raw. Go check out the Sharpshoot. Seriously, check it out. I'm not being biased. It is seriously one of the best shows on YouTube. Aussie does an amazing job with it. The layout is fantastic. The quality is fantastic. The segments are fantastic. It's just fantastic. So seriously, go check that out. And uh, while you're at it, like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash ropebreakwrestling. You know, follow us on Twitter, at ropebreakwrestling. Um, you can always follow me, at Real Donato ever want to get in contact with me talk to me about my show throw in your questions always uh you can always contact me there and you know obviously subscribe right here to our youtube channel that way you're not searching for before the bell sharpshoot react it's all piled right here on youtube you don't even need to go any separate places we got it all right here and while you're at it go to roadbreakwrestling.com all of the latest news and rumors are up all of our podcasts, everything Rope Break Wrestling is all right there on our website. Just bookmark us. That'll make it easier. That way you don't got to keep searching for us. What's the name? What's the name? It's right there. And by the way, you shouldn't forget what the name is anyway. It's RopeBreakWrestling.com. Never forget that. And if you, if before you die, you remember one thing, remember RopeBreakWrestling.com. That's the only thing, that's the necessity. It's the only thing you need to remember in life. RopeBreakWrestling.com. Do you think I said that enough? I don't think I did. RopeBreakWrestling.com. How about that for shameless plugs? You like that? I, I did. So it's about time to wrap up. And it uh, wouldn't be before the bell if I uh, didn't end it this way. And talk to you guys about you and your friends. Got to do it. I do it every day, every time I'm on React, and I got to do it every every time I'm before the bell. Because I need to make sure you guys get this ingrained. If you're fans of Rope Break Wrestling, and you have friends who know nothing about Rope Break Wrestling because you've not told them about it, you're being neglectful, you're being a terrible friend, because you're not sharing the wealth. Rope Break is a lifestyle. And if you're not living the rope rig lifestyle, then, well, you're not really living. And, you know, I know what you're thinking. Oh, well, you know, you're the, you know, you're the, one of the co-creators of Rope Break. You know, this is your website. You're just being biased. No, listen, I'm not being biased. This is a lifestyle, and you're not living. And, like I said, that's not me being biased. That is just a fact of life. So, yeah, you can go over to the bleachers. You know, you can go cage side all you want. But the fact will always remain that neither one of those is as good as being in the ring with rope break. And in the words of Tyson Kidd, fact. 
So that right there just sums it up. Go tell your friends. Tell them to like our Facebook page. Tell them to follow us on Twitter. Bookmark our website. What was it? Ropebreakwrestling.com. How did you forget it already? I just told you like 30 times a second ago. How are you forgetting already? Come on. We got Alzheimer's. Come on, dude. <sighs> you people. So go bookmark us. Subscribe on YouTube. That way you can find everything we're doing. You can keep up on all things WWE. You can be a part of awesome giveaways, which reminds me. We have a huge giveaway coming for Survivor Series if we reach 3,000 likes on Facebook. So go to our Facebook page and like the giveaway. We are giving away a copy, a free copy, mind you, of WWE 2K15 for the console of your choice. Do you want it for the PS3, the Xbox 360, Xbox One, PS4? It doesn't matter. You can get it for whichever console you want. We're even including an alternative cover, just in case you're not really feeling the John Cena cover that you get with the game. It's that simple. Like the page, invite your friends to like the page, and boom, you're entered to win. When we hit 3,000 likes, the contest will begin, and we will, we will give you details on how you can enter and how you can increase your chances to win this free copy. And you know, I've heard a lot of people say, why would I want to win this? Um, I don't know, because it's free. You don't got to pay anything for it. It's, 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 sim it's as simple as that. You're not paying anything for it. It's absolutely free. And it's, it's just as simple as that. I mean, come on, guys. It's not rocket science. Like a page, you possibly win something for free. Really not hard. All right, guys, that's, that's enough of me going on and on and on. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And I hope you guys have enjoyed all of my episodes. Like I said, you can always contact me. I'll leave all the links in the description of how you can reach me. Let me know what you guys think. And uh, as always, this has been Before the Bell. I'm your host, Matt Donato. I will see you guys right back here, same time, same exact place.